Well, happy birthday to the channel. So this is one of my favorite cupcakes. It's uh, Fruity Pebbles flavored. <laughs> so I will be enjoying that after filming today. So I wanted to put this little mini series together to show you some of the behind the scenes aspects of the channel. So this video is going to be focused on the analytics. How does YouTube see success and how do I as a content creator uh, view my success? So we're going to go through the analytics, what they mean, how when you're interacting with these videos, what kind of data is collected? How does the algorithm actually work? We're gonna go through some of those things on this video. The second video is going to be talking about what hardware and software I use and generally how I do my filming. And then the third one might be very interesting for you if you want to get into video creation in any way. Uh, so I will be going through my actual editing process, how I actually do my editing and showing you how I use my tools for filming and editing in that third video. All right, so before we head over to YouTube Analytics, which is the main place for anyone that's doing anything on YouTube, even if you've made just one video, that's really the creative area where they talk to you about the analytics, and I do mean talk to you. They have videos and tips and tricks, but a ton of analytics to determine how YouTube thinks you're doing to the point where uh, sometimes it gives you digital confetti if, you're, if your video is doing well according to YouTube. Uh, and I have had some of those, so thank you. You are the reason that that has happened. Nothing viral, nothing like that. They just have done well. Uh, and then I look at analytics that I feel make my videos successful. And so we'll go over both of those. But what we're going to talk about before we jump into all of that is the YouTube algorithm and why you should consider subscribing. So first of all, subscribing does basically nothing uh, to bother you. You won't get um, a ton of things uh, sent to you, nothing like that. When you hit the subscribe button, literally it is just telling YouTube that you enjoy my content. And the thing is, it's not going to constantly uh, pepper you with my content if you only watch videos here and there. It'll just subtly put those in once in a while because it understands your viewing pattern. So it looks at engagement, which is did you comment? Did you like it? the engagement um, as far as how long, so watch time is the other component because YouTube feels that if you watch the video um, to, I think it's 35% of the video and that could be floating around in the video. You could be you know, speeding up, going to different places in the video, but in total, did you watch at least 35% of the video? They consider that good. I'll show you what the average is on my channel. And then how often do you click on the actual thumbnail. So I'm not going to go over how I make my thumbnails. Honestly, I just do a screenshot of me doing a video and then I put text on it and I try to match colors. That's what I do. Um, but how often is the title and the content interesting enough for you to click on it? Those are the three main things that YouTube is looking at when it is suggesting videos to you as a viewer. So why subscribe? So the big reason I am highlighting on this is one, to tell you that nothing happens really when you hit that subscribe button. It's only when you hit the notification, which is the little bell, uh, that it'll start to send you emails and that sort of thing. So if you want that, thank you, go ahead and do that. The reason I highlight the subscription though is because YouTube has a rule where I do not get a community tab until I reach a thousand subscribers. So, that's also the time where you can get ad money and that sort of thing. I will not do that. Um, I do want to get to a thousand subscribers mostly because I want to be able to communicate better with you, the audience. So what this means is I could put out polls to see what kind of information you are interested in. And I can also understand when you are online uh, to do live feeds. So these could be live Q&A, we could, you know, do code together or build a taxonomy together or something like that. 
uh, and it would allow me to post in my community tab. So anybody that is subscribed to me uh, would get um, a feed, uh, a notice in their feed to say, hey, Ashley Faith is going to be live in five minutes or something like that. So you can actually join. Uh, so I can go live before reaching a thousand subscribers, but I can't send you any notifications. And so I would have to depend on either knowing you personally uh, or putting it out on LinkedIn, which has been successful, but LinkedIn also has an algorithm. So if you don't see it, you might miss out. So that's one reason to consider subscribing. Otherwise, the subscription button really doesn't do anything anymore on YouTube, so rest assured. Uh, the other thing is if you are the very big percentage of people watching this in the LinkedIn feed, again, I just wanna say thank you. If you engage in my videos, even if you just save them for later and watch them when you need, that's what they're there for. I'm not in this for the clicks or the likes or you know, any of those things. I'm doing this because I have so many people in my past that have asked me for the same advice. And I have a lot of experience where I have fallen on my face, I've done things wrong. And if I can impart some of that real world knowledge to you, then I count myself successful. And I have had so many really kind, wonderful people reach out to me in the comment section. If you don't know this, my actual real email is in the description below. So if you wanna send me an email, you have my email. <laughs> um, I get so many things from people that are just so encouraging. Cautionary tale though, and I will leave some uh, links below on the darker side of being on YouTube. I'm not gonna go into all of it here because I do try to keep the channel very positive, but there are some mean people, <laughs> people that are just out there to hurt. Um, there are ways to delete or block people from commenting on your channel. And unfortunately, I've already had to do that. Um, people that are just, you know, very, very nasty or people that are not real people, they're robots and they're putting uh, <laughs> uh, adult content kind of things into the comments. And I don't want that either. Uh, so it's a good thing that YouTube allows you to protect your well-being as a creator um, but for anybody thinking of doing this themselves, I would really encourage you to think through that because I will be the first one to say I don't always have tough skin. Sometimes even just the critical, not really negative um, comments make me have imposter syndrome, make me really think, well, wait, do I really know that thing? And that's why I say this channel is me imparting what I know works for the work that I have done, the companies I have worked with, and the companies I have talked to and consulted with. So do I know everything in the world about these topics? No, nor should I ever say that. And if anyone is telling you they are, they are the supreme expert in something, you wanna question that, because that means that they know everything and anything about that topic. Everything in technology is constantly changing. We're mixing and matching and finding new ways of doing things. So there could be a day that I make a video that contradicts something I made maybe a year or two ago. That's just the nature of technology. And that's why, you know, engaging and constantly learning is a part of this business. All right, so with all of that out of the way, let's go get started. Now, how am I doing? Uh, that's more of a complicated answer, but the long and short is the channel is actually doing very well. Uh, normally when somebody joins YouTube, it's to make videos and hope that somebody finds them. And so getting even 35 subscribers within the first few months or even a year uh, for a typical channel is really, really strong. So um, this is my one year anniversary and I am already halfway to a thousand. Uh, so thank you. It's because of you and because you enjoy the content that I create. So thank you for that. Uh, let's go into the actual analytics. So you're going to see the video that I posted last and it's going to have a few different pieces of information. So ranking by views. 
This tells you based on the, t the last 10 videos I uploaded, where does this one fall in rank? Now, this is not actually a good indication of whether this video has done well or not. Uh, we're gonna get into that uh, as we go through this video, but if we hover over this, it will show you the rankings one through 10. You can see that they are all by how many views. I mentioned in the beginning of this video, YouTube doesn't care only about views. It cares about how long you watch a video, whether you watch more videos like mine or more of mine after you watch the first one, as well as any other kinds of interactions, whether you click on a thumbnail or you like it or you make a comment, all of those things add up to how YouTube feels my video is doing. So this ranking by views is kind of silly, but ranking by views, I think it just causes a lot of anxiety for people. It literally just says how many people have looked at that video in um, the amount of time for the last 10 videos that you've had. So here, the views will tell you what the typical range is. So typical range is 40 to 70, but this is only telling me in all of my videos. It does not tell me out of these types of videos that I create. So I have a lot of videos that I do some experimentation with. So the Reading Fun in the Sun series is sort of in that category. I don't know if anyone's going to like those. I enjoy filming them and I enjoy reviewing the books. So hopefully you like them. And if you don't, then I will know that because the analytics will tell me that. Uh, but those types of experimental videos do not get as many views as the honest reviews. The honest reviews get more views because there are additional people, i.e. the vendors I'm reviewing, who are sharing that with their, their own audiences. So that's usually why these videos get more views. It doesn't actually translate into subscribers or additional uh, feature clicks uh, at all. It literally just means more people are watching that video. It usually doesn't translate into anything more than that. And the same goes with all of these. It's looking at the type of analytics for time frame and not necessarily type of video because it doesn't really know what type of video you're making. Only you can determine that. Impression click through. So I had mentioned this is one of the things that YouTube is often looking at. Now, this tells me 4.6% of anybody that sees a thumbnail, sees the thumbnail for this video specifically, is clicking on it. So the average for YouTube is between three and 5% click through. So I'm almost at 5% for this one, which means when people are seeing it in their feed or elsewhere on the web, they are clicking on it. Average view duration. So this one is a weird one. I post most of my videos on LinkedIn and you all, uh, majority of you are watching this, if you are watching this, on LinkedIn, uh, because that's where a lot of people, uh, according to the analytics, are watching. Now, the interesting thing because of that behavior is most people that are on LinkedIn are there to look at something, scroll through something, and then walk away. So what ends up happening is you all watch the video between three and four minutes to kind of get a gist. And I've actually talked to a lot of people that say they watch my videos. So I know this from, you know, talking to all of you, well, not all of you, but some of you, uh, about the behavior here. And uh, after that three or four minutes, you kind of understand what the video is about and you can save it to watch it later. You can save that on LinkedIn to save it for later and, and watch it later. Or you could actually do it on YouTube. If you click into YouTube, it can save for you. Okay, so what else do you see on the screen here? So we've got channel analytics where it tells you how many subscribers and it also tells you in the last month, how many additional subscribers did you get? Um, I would like to also see how many you lost. It's actually very common for you to lose subscribers because uh, maybe people see your video show up too often in their feed, or maybe they just thought you did certain content, but you don't. 
Um, or, you know, sometimes people just accidentally click the button <laughs> to unsubscribe. Uh, and so anyways, it's, it's very common to have people unsubscribe. But there's probably also a chance that some people just didn't like that content. And uh, I would like to know when that happened. It also tells me overall how many views I had on the channel. So that's across the entire portfolio of videos that I have done and how many hours of watch time. So these are really important because if you want to be monetized on YouTube, you have to reach a certain threshold. I will show you what that looks like when we get to the monetization tab. It also tells me out of the last 48 hours, which of the videos are the most popular. Uh, then YouTube actually does a lot of things to support content creators. So they actually have videos specifically talking to you about how to do better um, at, at YouTube. They give you ideas based on your own YouTube channel and you can see your recent subscribers. Okay, so the content tab is kind of where you can get a quick peek. You can see right here, I'm uploading uh, the video that comes uh, as number three in this series, and the second one is already up. Uh, so I usually have this done by date, but uh, you can also do by views. So this gives me a quick take on what are the top viewed. Again, view does not, viewed does not mean successful. People can view your video for two seconds and that still counts. So that's not the only thing we're looking at here. All analytics are not about one unit of measure. So the very first video I did, which was really rough now that I'm looking back at it, uh, has uh, almost 650 and has four comments. It also has 25 likes. So this means that it has a decent amount of views and it has a decent amount of interactions, meaning likes. So if I wanted to go in and look at the analytics specifically for that video, it tells me that I got 30 subscribers out of this, out of this video over the course of its lifetime. It also tells me that nobody's watched it in the last 48 hours, but it's also uh, the 4th of July weekend, so that's not really that surprising. A new thing that I actually find very interesting um, with YouTube is this new like key moments, which this one's pretty typical. You usually get this J curve. That's what they call it, a J curve, uh, where you kind of figure out where people drop off. People almost always drop off after you introduce what the video is because if they like it, they will save it and then come back later. At least that's the trend with my videos. Now here is a very key metric. Again, why it's it's dug so deep into the analytics, I don't know. View duration. But this is really important because it tells YouTube this video is engaging. And the viewer, i.e. you, would probably enjoy videos that are sort of similar to this. And they understand what similarities this would have because on the back of this video, I have put tags on what this video is about and the words I use. YouTube, if you go and you search on Google, sometimes it'll give you back a, a piece of a video to watch that answers your question. It does that because YouTube is constantly looking at the words you're using. So what does that look like? Let's look at this video. There is See, it's putting an ad on my stuff. Ugh. Okay, so if you go to this little down three dots next to all the videos, you can actually open up the transcript. This is something you might not have realized. If you open up the transcript, you can actually go um, timestamp by timestamp to see what I said. So all of this is happening constantly. This is how YouTube grabs things and gives you an answer. I mean, there's a lot more to it, i.e. there's probably some knowledge graphs involved. There's definitely NLP involved. Definitely some um, artificial intelligence somewhere. Um, but this is a big part of it. This is some of the raw data that it uses. So watch time, this tells me 
over the course of this video existing that a total of 45 hours have been watched from this video, which is completely mind boggling to me. Uh, let's go into reach. So the reach is telling me how many impressions did it get served up on YouTube? So when somebody's on YouTube, how often did this thing show up based on what they searched on? So there are all kinds of uh, tools out there uh, that will, you know, give you YouTube tags and help you make your thumbnails better and your titles better for a price. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. You can figure that out without paying somebody else to do that for you. Um, if you're interested in some videos in how I do that, let me know. So based on these impressions, how often do people actually click through for this video? And the answer is 5%. So according to YouTube, that was a success. This video was a success. For people that see this video, they like to click on it. Awesome. So here's the funnel analysis. So if you're all familiar with it, out of the 3,000 views, 25% uh, were from YouTube recommending my content. Cool, so that means something that you did made YouTube think that you would enjoy this video. Most likely, you probably watched one of my other videos or maybe you subscribed, something like that. Uh, the 5% click through, uh, views from those impressions is 162. And the, remember that view duration is important to us because that is another indicator to YouTube if it's doing well, and that's about five minutes, and it tells you the total watch time. Now, it also tells you where the traffic is coming from. So for this video, this was the trailer on my main channel for a while. So what that meant is somebody searched for me on YouTube and that was the video that they saw. So that's why channel pages, i.e. my main page, is the highest percentage here. Now, external, right? So we can go down to external. LinkedIn is 52%. That's not a surprise. And many, 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 many people watch them in LinkedIn. So I post my videos to LinkedIn and therefore a lot of people watch them in their LinkedIn feed instead of going the whole way to YouTube to, to look at them. This is an interesting area. Um, you can't see it for this one, but I'll show you another video where you can, is what search terms did, did somebody use on YouTube to actually find your content? Now let's go to engagement and then audience. Uh, again, this is not working right now, unfortunately. So you can also go in and look at different time periods. And then there's an advanced mode, but we're going to go over that in later videos some other time. So this video is a good one for analytics. Let's look at this one. So I only have seven additional, additional subscribers because of this video, but this video, you can see the live traffic that is coming in and where they are coming from. So you'll see this, this is gonna be interesting for us to look at. YouTube search came in at 66%. So that means 66% of people watching this video, which is quite old. I mean, I've only been around a year, so it's not, it's not that old, but it's old enough compared to my other content. So in here, you can see there's two dips. Right, so here, this is where somebody maybe sped the video up or they dropped out. Same with this one here. Okay, this is one of my most popular uh, videos. So let's go to reach where I want to show you, aha, right here. So when people on YouTube search for F score, F1 score, F1 score machine learning, or what is a good F1 score? These are the words that people type in to find this video. And when this video shows up, which is about 3,000, 15% of the time YouTube is suggesting this when they type these things in. Out of that, we have that almost 5% click-through rate. 
So here is a much higher duration. So it's 27%. YouTube feels that anything between 25 and 30% uh, duration is good. Uh, so this is a 15 minute video. I have noticed nobody watches past 20 to 25 minutes. And most people don't last more than 12 minutes. So even though YouTube is telling me this amount here, remember it said average on channels between three and four minutes, that's people watching the video shortly to see if they want to continue watching it some other time. So here is where you have to take what YouTube tells you and translate it to what you know. So let's look at my worst videos. So these uh, are set as private for now. So I'm actually going to uh, schedule. So uh, there's others like this one that I did a very good video. I uh, had some people that were not comfortable um, in front of a camera and I had a lot of editing to do. And at the end of the day, they were not happy enough with the video for me to go forward with it. This is something that really stinks when it happens because I put a lot of time into that video. So I have learned since then to make sure that anybody that I am reviewing for the Honest Review series is prepared for my actual Honest Review. Um, and I do make sure that I am technically correct before I put anything up so I'm not giving bad information but it is an honest review and sometimes people don't like it so you'll see also um, my feed the children it actually has a lot of likes but not that many views um, the reason for this not doing so well is because it was seasonal and YouTube does actually look at what season is mentioned or is in in the actual video uh, for a suggestion. So this might actually show up in more people's feeds around American Thanksgiving, not in the middle of summer. Then there's the main analytics page. And this is um, somewhat like what you also see in the dashboard, but with more details. So you can see how I'm in the green. Woohoo! That means I'm doing better than normal. I suppose, which actually, by the way, is pretty good for the summer. Um, usually people are not watching YouTube as much in the summer. Uh, so thank you again for watching. And you can see that um, in the last few hours, how many people uh, have or how many videos have been watched, which videos have been watched. And over here, you can actually see which video and how it performs, right? So I, I loaded the uh, showcase review, the honest review for a pool party. And you can see I went from kind of this lull where there was 37 views over this weekend and then it goes whoop way up on Tuesdays. Here's something you might not know. I post on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I don't always get Tuesday. Maybe I'll do a Wednesday, but I almost never miss Thursday. Here's why. LinkedIn, has found that professionals tend to really have the most interaction with their platform, i.e. LinkedIn, on Thursday mornings. Thursday morning is the hot time to post anything on LinkedIn. You heard it from me, folks. If you didn't already know, if you want someone to see what you're doing, do it on a Thursday morning. Uh, so monetization. So this is what you have to do to become monetized, i.e. make money on videos. So you have to have a thousand subscribers and then you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. The other thing is 365 days and it resets. The more you do on YouTube, the more videos people have to see um, and watch. So it's really just a matter of time. So. Moral of the story is the channel is doing really well. Is it wildly successful? No, um, but it's successful to me because I have the right 600 or so people watching these videos. That's because 
you know, you all enjoy what I do here. And I just want to say thank you. And with that, that concludes the analytics portion of our video today. Okay, so with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.